right? I have run through with you what are the possible topics that will come out in practical. Right? For the O-level students, we have an upcoming workshop. Uh, study later to prep you all for the O-levels. Because uh, I think prelim, a lot of you all are still not hungry enough, not serious enough. So tell you, you also won't uh, really understand what's happening, right? A full workshop. But I would like to give you a head start over here, all right, for practical, especially IT uh, students, because this is your exams, right? Now, if you, it, it's very easy. And I'm pretty sure almost 100% of the school, your chem teacher or science teacher won't tell you what is being tested. I'll not talk about physics and bio, since I'm a bit outdated, I'll say. The last time I did O-levels, uh, physics and bio, that was like donkey years ago, all right? That's many decades ago. Now, what I'll talk about is uh, at least level, O-level, if not uh, IT, year four, if not you call it, I just simply call it set four, right? A uh, chem practical. What is it all about? Okay. So this once again is recorded and uh, my admin team will also be sending one to you, CC to your parent, all right? So once again, uh, some of you ask me, so I've responded to you very, very nicely. I even challenge you for you to think of what is being tested. Now, there's only a few test uh, topics that will be tested in the practical, by and large. And I'm sure every year that how come your teacher never tell you when you are going for your practical exam, all right? In sec three, they wouldn't say that. Because actually not a lot. There's only a few things, all right? Sec four, you have finished all your syllabus, all right? Theory-wise. Practical-wise, there's only a few of them that will be tested. I call it A and B. Right, it is called a hands-on. Let's just have a five minutes here. Right, a hands-on practical. Right, so you'll be using your close to five sensors to carry out experiment and then you observe. Right, so hands-on has what? Hands-on has the follow procedure. You are a good boy, good girl, follow procedure. Don't argue. After which, then you will have what? You have your experimental results. So you have to document it down, note down, right? Note down your experimental observation and results. So I'll just write here, note down your observation, i.e., results. Right, so they give you some marks here now. Once again, outside is very shiny. There's a lot of tuition center. Normally, home tutor can't do this. But a lot of tuition centers are into this very shiny object. What is this shiny, shiny object? Right? The shiny object is, oh, we have a lab right? for all sciences, especially chemistry. Why? Because physics and bio, the lab is not really a lab. That physics and bio lab, your parents can teach you. Your older siblings can teach you. You can set it up very nicely. It won't flout any rules and laws. Chemistry is the one whereby it touches chemical. And thanks to 911, touch wood, not thanks, but due to 911, all right, the terrorist attack. Chemicals are heavily controlled in Singapore. I think uh, controlled by NE, is NEA, probably NEA, SPF, Singapore Police Force, and SCDF, Singapore uh, Civil Defense Force. Right. So it's heavily controlled. So people will start to say, okay, chemistry is very difficult to run a lab. But if you run a lab, then the business is very good. So a lot of people, a few started it, and the business is really, really good. And after which everyone are pressured to do so, all the tuition centers, they'll say, okay, we have chemistry that come in. But if you look at your results, do you realize the results over the years, they never tell you with the lab or without the lab, did it improve or not? They don't say because practical itself doesn't really improve the grades that much if they don't need properly. It's shiny objects. And that's the reason, if you ask me, why winners don't have lab? We don't want to set it up. This course is cumbersome. And over the years, we'll get people to improve for O-levels and IP students. Five, six, seven grade jump without the lab, right? And in terms of lab, there's actually only a few things important in the practical, which is not the hands-on. Why? Because ladies and gentlemen, I'm very sure everyone here can follow procedure. I'm very sure everyone can note down the observation results. Unless you shake your hands, that one, I can't help you. Unless you're colorblind, you're supposed to get a letter from a medical doctor, a specialist, and you got, I think if I'm not wrong, 15 more minutes for your practical, as well as the teacher will note down the observation results for you. So the teacher cannot lie down, huh? Makes sense or not? So you should go and get the letter. I always been telling you, if you're colorblind or a medical issue, go and get it. Don't waste that, all right? It, it is there already, it is there. Go and get your cert. Now, if not, everyone can get this. Now, what happened is, this is the one whereby I think everyone is very in. And I realized that all the tuition centers that have so-called lab, they don't focus on this. Why? Because some of you came from there recently. That's why I get to know about it. Not this year, but also last year. Right? This one is the theory. Because they will ask you the theory questions. They'll ask you the theory questions. Okay? So what I'm saying is eventually the procedure and note down the observation results. You all will get the marks. Close to full marks. But it's a theoretical question. Theoretical question. The theory question. Theoretical. How to spell theoretical? Is it like that? Okay. Theory. Right? It can be simple. The theory question, which is what? Which is the theory? So after you get a result, they will ask you to discuss and they have a lot of marks given to the topic of experiment. Now, can someone tell me what are the topic that we will be tested for the hands-on? It's always that few. All right, let me list it down for you. You recall back, what can we ask you to do hands-on? Atomic structure? I never even seen ions and atoms in my life before. Not to be atomic structure. Bonding? What do you want to ask? Oh, ionic bonding. You saw electrostatic forces of attraction before? I never. So, so common sense. So I think it all started from here. Where? It all started with your titration. ABS titration. Very common. Titration has a couple of types, right? Acid base. I do a, 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 a quick one over here. All right. In the workshop uh, for O-level student, then I will spend, uh, I think, is it four hours or eight hours doing that? All right. And yes, we're going to spend a lot on that. I think it's eight hours. Acid base reaction. It can also be one. Acid B. Very good. The soluble carbonate groups. 
reaction. So you're supposed to know this, know this through what? Through your theory. Where? Where do we learn this? Acid base salts. Those I taught you ABS one way or another, whether weekly class in secretary or the revision workshops over the years, right? Usually June, if not uh, December. I talked about this before. Right. Then what else? Titration. Now, this is the killer. There's something called redox titration. What is it? Very simple. It's involving a reducing and oxidizing agent. Okay, you think back, you should have done at least one experiment in your school before, hands on. But are you aware? The problem is the teacher don't go through the theory. They just do finish, okay, everyone finish really. Okay, well, some of y'all look like very bored like that. You want me to go through, yes or no? Yes, I go through, don't want to skip. Because that takes up 10 minutes of our time. Make sure it's worth it, then I'll stop. All right, redox titration. Now, what do you mean by titration? Titration is where they ask you to do volumetric analysis. What is volumetric analysis? You're going to find the concentration of an unknown analyte, a chemical whether it's acid or base, acid or carbonate, one of them, reducing agent, oxidizing agent. We asked to do a volumetric analysis. And volumetric analysis, basically, it touches which topic in our syllabus? Start with M. M, don't know what. Along the way, they'll ask you to do more. Because you want to find the concentration, you have to touch more. And this is called a simple one. The question might get complicated. Now, those I taught ABS, I taught you ABS before, and all around. If I taught you more calculation before, I have talked about something called back titration. It's a JC1 syllabus uh, content, but it, it will be brought down to your practical and test advice guided. I have just had one student, can't remember, is it, uh, can't remember the term, is it Quotron Presbyterian? I got a pair of uh, twins, right? Uh, we just get to know them. They just got to know us in June. So they were telling me their, their, their uh, recent prelim, right, uh, was on what? Was on this. Back titration, something like that. All right, so again, I wouldn't put the, down, the word down because they're not supposed to name, know the name. So volumetric analysis. Now, what else will be tested on, ladies and gentlemen? Come on, hands on. QA. You don't even know QA is going to come out. You must be joking with me. The good thing about QA is we don't have to memorize anything because the tables of observation given to us. But that's the problem. A lot of you don't even memorize. Go and not memorize. Don't go and revise. Because the question... After your observation, they'll ask you what's the cat ion, what's the n ion, what is this and that, and that. The QA topic got a lot of theory inside. Do you revise your theory before you go for your practical? That's my question to you. Okay. For example, when you test for iodide, chloride, and sulfate ions, you add nitric acid. One mark. Why do we use nitric acid at the start? They'll ask you the theory. So you don't know, you lose or not. This is a standard question. Okay, things like that. All right, a very quick one. One other topic. Come on, help yourself. O level student, you got two play. You got pre uh, your prelim play, you got O levels. IP you only got one play left. Go. Energy changes. How do I know, even before I walk to my bench, that I know energy changes will be tested? Some of you ask me a lot, practical. this is the exact answer that I told you, but I give you this one a lot more, right? You can't spend too much time here. Go. Energy changes. What do you see? You see a thermometer. This is technically the only topic by, by and large whereby you'll be tested on the, using the thermometer, right? Energy change, heat change. Next one, high heat rate. Go. What else? You'll be tested. Speed of reaction. So speed of reaction or rate of reaction, what do you see? You see what on the bench? Stopwatch. Obviously, you see a stopwatch. I don't need to think. All right, so you mentally get ready. So you need the what? After that, you all know energy changes, speed of reaction is all about theory. After you collect the results, they ask you plot graph or whatever, and then you start the discussion. Anyone, hands on, you did something different besides this form. Do you realize by and large, these are the four? Can we ask you to do organic chem? No. Can we do, ask you to do electrolysis? You can't even set up the, the series circuit. Only physics students can do that. How we test you? Are you me everyone? So I'm sure that a lot of teachers don't even tell them practical what to prepare. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how we prepare. Can I? Don't say I never share. So again, all this will be communicated to the parents itself. So they help you. Now, so this is the A. So what about the B? So these are the hands-on. B, oops. I'm going to zoom, but I don't need that. Uh, okay. B is what? B is the planning question. Now, once again, practical, usually we say there is three questions, but it's not accurate these days. They might split it into four or five questions into smaller parts. Also, that quite thing called, or there are two to three questions may not be accurate anymore, right? And nobody said that in the first place. It was through observation people saw it, but it has changed. Planning question. So planning question, which are the very heavy one? Planning question, all right? So planning question is fully what? Fully theory. So this is the one whereby you have to prepare your content to go in. It's usually how many marks? Four to five marks. Yes, this is the norm. Minimum three, if it's part of a big question. Again, the question how they play, we will know these things. So a planning question, they heavily test you on what? They heavily test you on one, two, three, and four that we have spoken previously over here, earlier, as well as others. Which other topic they can ask you to design an experiment? Very common. You have done a lot of planning questions in your school. Come, impress me. Let's start early. Come on, let me wake you up. Ready? Sorry? So, so preparation. What are we... 
waiting for. Isn't this the theory we prep for my theory paper? Shockingly, you don't prepare for your practical, which is the first paper usually. And this is why you lose the marks. And usually practical come out of preparation, theory paper won't come out really. Make sense? So you lose it really, usually. Make sense? The paper two. Because they really ask you write the procedure, right? Paper two written, ask you write again, that's so silly. Make sense? Especially O-level exam. They won't do this kind of silly things. All right? What else? So you're going to prepare yourself. It's about your theory. Anyone? When I got planning question on the day. Don't have a oh, you. All right, got no planning question, you sure? Okay. Congratulations. That's then easy for practical then. What else? Anyone? We can ask you anything. We can ask you to set up a what? An electrolytic cell to do electroplating. Blah, blah, blah. So you draw a diagram and say, okay, I want to electroplate a key. How to do that? What's a cation? What's an electrolyte? What's the anode? What's the anode? What do you do? What do you observe? Blah, blah, blah. That's your three to four marks, four to five marks. Make sense? All right. So what other things? Anyone? The planning question. Reversible reaction. How? How to play? Plus minus. How? How do they do so? <laughs> Think about it, right? You probably observe one. Not the common. That common, I suppose. The one I'm talking about is quite common. All right. What else? It can be anything. We can ask you to do a halogen, which is the current topic you're doing, or the next topic we are doing, metal displacement reaction. Make sense? They tell you, oh, I have three bottles of blah, 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 or three metals. Uh, describe an experiment, all right, on a plan on how you're going to investigate the reactivity of three unknown metal WXY. Make sense? You don't even know the metal. They say it's three unknown WXY. Play. Use your theory. And you change your words a bit. But again, you need to know the theory. What else? Don't forget the chromatography. Remember? Oh. The, the 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 drink I drink has some in uh, uh whatever the dye. D Y E, whatever. Can you conduct an experiment or plan an experiment to investigate whether there's any um uh, illegal toxic dye inside the drink, blah blah blah. Paper chromatography. Make sense, everyone? All right, come copy this down. You don't take a quick picture. Okay, again, this is etc. Oops. There's a lot more. So it's all about the theory. Yes, so prepare yourself because one come out there is four to five marks. You don't wait. All right, online, on site, you want to take a picture? Go and take. All right, we'll move in 10 seconds.